Thanks for watching this clip from my new podcast, In Search of Soil. For more great clips and full episodes, check out the links in the description below. Adding the carbon to the soil in this recalcitrant form. So it's not going to be food for microbes right away. They're not going to go in and try and digest this. Fungi aren't going to go after it right away. I'm putting carbon in the soil, which is beneficial for a few reasons as I see it. You're taking carbon out of the atmosphere and you're sequestering it in the soil. But there's other benefits happening in the soil. And I'll let you speak on that. So when you put that carbon down, you tie it up from going into the air. What's happening in the soil? How are you getting benefit from that compared to, say, compost carbon, which becomes a microbial food source? Excellent question. And thanks for directing it a little. The biochar, and if anyone who watches this, I would suggest that just do a Google search on, on images, biochar, and look and see what the biochar looks like under an electronic microscope. You'll you'll come up with you'll you'll come up with that literally thousands of pictures of how you make it, different kilns, but the pictures under an electron microscope are very revealing. It's a honeycomb structure. Biochar in, in itself, if I were to take and put a teaspoon of biochar and a teaspoon, tablespoon in my hand of biochar, it would have the surface area of about a football field. It is an enormous surface area. It's more, more air, more space. It also absorbs moisture. It is that surface area in that space becomes a home for bacteria inhabit it. Mycelia, the bacteria is bacteria die, and what they do there do in their life, mycelia then will go and take the nutrients. Biochar is negatively charged. So biochar will attract to itself positively charged ions. And for example, nitrogen, it will absorb nitrogen. And when it's not absorb, adsorb, it's attached to the surface area of the biochar. And it makes it available to the bacteria, to the mycelia, to, to the roots then, to go to the plant. So that's the, the what, and, and moisture, it retains moisture, uh, so one then will water less. It, it will improve, a, the poorer the soil, the bigger change you're going to see. However, it does improve both uh, duff, the, fl the fluffiness of your soil, uh, and it's more of this relationship between what the biochar does in the soil, one of the things it does is it's called, it has a negative car, uh, priming effect. And this is something that they've only seen in the past few years. So, for example, when one puts compost in the soil, that carbon, the organic matter in carbon, I mean in the soil, will break down and release to the atmosphere. And one can measure that. That's measurable from year to year. When one puts biochar into the soil, it works. It has a relationship with that labeled carbon, unlike the recalcitrant carbon. So the carbon of, of compost is a labeled carbon. It's more available to plants and will break down rather you know quicker. That labeled carbon, that relationship, this negative priming is, say, for example, one has you start off with a hundred percent just straight label carbon in the soil, compost carbon. After a year, these numbers are just for example, after a year you have 75%. After two years, you'll have 50%. If one has biochar in that soil with that carbon, then in the first year you won't see as great a reduction. So your soil organic carbon is more stable and more long lived. And those are some of the things that, that the biochar um, 
does in creating this healthy soil biome. Thanks for watching this clip from my new podcast, In Search of Soil. For more great clips and full episodes, check out the links in the description below.